Welcome back to Hot Take Tuesday. I am your host once again, 24. If you don't know about Hot Take Tuesday, Hot Take Tuesday is a series that I do on this channel where I give my honest opinion about something that went wrong or went right in the industry. And we're gonna talk about it here on the channel. So today's hot take that I have is Days Gone being whatever you wanna call it, mediocre, bad, good, great, being a good thing. I put mediocre in the title because a lot of people thought that it was mediocre. It wasn't just IGN and GameSpot, it was also some people that I trust their opinion on video games. And for me, as I was watching the gameplay for my video game analysis, my first thought was, well, the gameplay is going to appeal to certain people. It's going to appeal to people who like to do busy work. And it's also going to appeal to people who like transportation type of video games. Because the motorcycle, even though it is tedious, even though it is taxing and, and somewhat a bother to use, it is very, very fun to ride, don't get me wrong but there are some things to not necessarily like about the game. And I think we can all agree that there needs to be some type of mission variety within the game. I do also think that there could be better gunplay overall with some of the shooting mechanics because it seems like they, again, and I mentioned this in my video game analysis, it seems like they took The Last of Us shooting and put it in Days Gone and it doesn't necessarily work as well, in my opinion as it does in The Last of Us, but the whole game, the whole experience, whether you consider it bad, mediocre, good, great, it is a good thing for Sony. It is a good thing for Ben Studios. If you're a fan of Ben Studios, if you're a fan of Sony, this is a good thing. The history of PlayStation 4, of the PlayStation 4, and even of the PlayStation 3 to an extent, is let's try some new things with this IP, with this developer, let's see what sticks, and then we'll come back in a couple of years and see what you got. That's been Sony's whole plan. The phrase that I'm going to use here is Sony either wins or learns. It's very, very commonplace for a lot of their developers, especially of the, the developers that released games early on in the PS4's life cycle to really not have great exclusives. If, if Trust me, it was a dark time for the first two to, th not two to three years, just the first two years really of the PS4's uh, life cycle because I mean, there was really not a lot of great exclusives for the PS4. A lot of good exclusives, a lot of okay exclusives, but not game of the year contenders that we've pretty much been privileged of getting for the past really three to four years. So I look at a lot of the games that came out in the early parts of 2000, not early parts, but later parts of 2013, early parts of 2014, and two of them really, really, uh, two of them are really, really good examples of what I'm talking about here. So with Killzone, with Killzone Shadowfall, you had a developer in Guerrilla Games, a very, very experienced de developer that has worked with Sony countless times to create continuating games in the Killzone series, make Killzone Shadowfall to coordinate with the release of the PS4, and Killzone Shadowfall was okay in some respects. In other respects, it was great, but for the most part, it was okay. And Guerrilla Games went zero dark 30. They just disappeared off the face of the map for like three years until they showed Horizon Zero Dawn at an E3 press conference for, uh, excuse me, Sony's E3 press conference, and the rest was history. It came out in 2017, it was a top game that year, and it won a whole bunch of awards. Some people gave it Game of the Year, other people didn't, but it was a fantastic Sony exclusive. The same thing goes with Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch went Zero Dark Thirty after Infamous Second Son. They didn't release a whole, a whole bunch of games. They didn't talk about their games that they released, and in 2018, guess what? They came out, or at least they announced, Ghosts of Tsushima. Looks like a really, really cool and interesting game to play for either the PS4 or PS5, to be honest with you. I have no idea what console it's coming out on. But I looked at all of the Sony exclusives that came out at the beginning and at the mid and even at the end because we are getting close to the end of the PS4. And all I can say is, is that they learned, every single developer. And I look at Ben Studios, Ben Studios' track record of games it's a whole bunch of siphon filter. It's not a whole bunch of other stuff. 
they did create one of the best PS Vita exclusive games in Uncharted Golden Abyss. But really beyond that game, that's it when I consider Ben Studios' whole roster of games being released really in the past decade. So I think Ben Studios is going to learn from this. I think they're going to take the lessons that they got from Days Gone. By the way, it's not that they failed. Days Gone is selling like hotcakes. It went gangbusters a couple of weeks ago when it was released. Like, a lot of people are enjoying it. And if you're enjoying it, hey, don't let me spoil the party. Because even though it, it kind of, it didn't fully meet my expectations, I'm still happy with the package that I got here, especially knowing that Ben Studios, specifically Sony and PlayStation, they have a really, really great track record of developers creating something that's okay and even good, and then exceeding that and going further beyond okay and good with their next release. I have high hopes for Ben Studios. Congratulations, Ben Studios, on the release on Days Gone. Congratulations, Sony, on yet another popular but may not necessarily be great exclusive. This has been 24. That was my hot take. I like Days Gone, but I don't necessarily think that it's game of the year contender quality material here. But that's it. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.